Hey folks, thanks for joining me this week. If you remember last week we painted this Tiger One with full interior. This week we're going to finish up the exterior, just the construction portion, and get this thing ready for some paint. Let's get at it. So first thing we're going to have to do is drill out some holes on the rear plate of this Tiger. And I just used my little drill and I think this is a 0.6 or a 0.8 millimeter drill bit. This is something that you can do by hand but it's much faster with this little drill bit. And this is just to prepare for at attachment points for some of the back parts. I got a new pair of nippers from Andy's Hobby Headquarters that are really nice and fine just like your God Hand blue handles. And I uh, was able to actually trim off some parts without having to sand, which is nice. One thing to note here with this exhaust is you got to put the flap in an open position because it only would have been closed if it were going underwater. So I also got to replace some parts with this photo etch upgrade set. Uh, this is where a lot of those upgrade parts came into play was on the exterior. Here you can see some pieces for the exhaust shroud on top getting put together. Uh, one trick here is to put some CA activator on the top of the exhaust piece and then use the CA on the brass parts and attach them. That way they instantly bond in place. Save yourself a little bit of hassle. And then we have these little uh, rivets or whatever these things are on top. I think they're just the tops of those bolts if you will. Um, again it's nice that they include that level of detail. So then moving on to the jack, um, we had to remove some rivets so we could super glue on some brass parts which looks really nice. Uh, it was really impressive how uh, they added the brass parts to this jack. It looks really good when it's all done. You guys are gonna see that here in just a second. Even the wing nuts on there, look how beautiful that looks. Went together like a glove. Again, RFM continues to impress me. Got to use some Transpafix 6K for this clear part, and I used it for all the clear parts on this model, but just showing you guys one example in the convoy light on the rear. I did attach the exhausts before painting. I'm going to keep the exhausts on minus the outside brass covers. One thing to note here is how it actually does line up with the inside which is pretty cool. So we're going to attach all these parts on the rear. It's looking good so far. I wanted to show you guys that we can make these little hinges uh, tool clasps workable. I think a lot of folks, to a lot of folks this looks daunting. And I will say for me as well, it was at first, and I did a lot of these on the Panther, so I have a little bit of experience doing them, and it worked out a lot better this time. So you can see with our jack, we had to put our handle on, and then we're putting that tool clasp on. And it is workable even after we glue it down, which is kind of nice. If you're really looking for those fine details, you want it to look realistic, it's nice that you can actually work these into place. You're going to need some tweezers that can actually get in there and do the job, like these little 0.3 millimeter tipped tweezers that I have so you can actually get in there and you can see it actually did latch on one side and then I'm pulling the handle back to activate or latch it in place again they are fully workable I am going to show you guys how I actually do that here in a moment so here's the handle portion of it so you can see I'm just bending it over my Tamiya photo etch pliers and then this is the top part this is the the clasp part and you can see there's two little like rivets on there we're going to bend those starting at those rivet points. We're just going to bend them down and make like a slight C shape out of this part. So you can see here, kind of a C shape. You know, just bent a little bit. Then this part is the bottom part. This is the part that we actually attach to the tank. So this is where that clasp will, and the handle will attach to. You can see I'm just bending up each side. And then there's two little prongs on the end that we're going to bend out words and that's where the clasp is going to latch on to. These parts may seem a little fiddly and they, they can be and this can be very frustrating until you get it down but once you do a few of these it kind of becomes like muscle memory you just remember how to put them together. You can see I'm not using any fancy tools just a pair of Tamiya uh, photo etch bending pliers nothing fancy and there I'm bending those prongs out and here you can see what it looks like after I'm done. Nice U shape with the prongs bent out. Now here's where I've seen it done on a tabletop and I'm 
I struggle to do that, uh, putting this all together on a tabletop. I like taking the handle and putting it in my fingers. And then what you do is just line up the pins on the holes of the, the pins of the clasp on the holes of the handle, and then pinch them together with your fingers. Because your fingers aren't going to like lose grip or anything like a pair of pliers or anything would. And then just take your second part, your bottom part of your clasp, and put that in the second set of holes. So there's two sets of holes. The clasp goes in the back hole, the bottom part of the clasp goes in the front hole. And just use your fingers to pinch them together. And then once you get them in place, you can take your tweezers and just pinch the end of your handle together. And it should hold. Now, it can fall back out. And believe me, it happens to me. It gets frustrating. But this is what it looks like when it's done. They're held in place. There's no glue or anything. They're just held in place by the spring action of the handle itself being clamped in there. And you can see, this is why we're doing it. Look at the kit details versus a finished one. It, it looks a lot better. The downside is on some kit parts, you're going to have to cut off the bad clasps to attach the, the good ones. So here we can see I'm putting all these in place. And again, they're still workable. Now, granted, once they're in place, I super glue them down because you don't want these to be forever workable because they'll just wear out and fall off. You don't want to do that. But again, it, the details, it looks it looks wonderful to see the details when they're done. This kit included some 3D printed parts, which I thought was pretty cool. And we can see here how we put on this piece with the 3D printed brackets. Moving on to the exhaust shrouds. I kept these off for painting, but I'm, I'm going to attach them with blue tag later, you'll see just for show, but I want to do some battle damage. So looking at some reference photos, I punched some holes in using my rivet maker just to make some holes and I dented them up real good. Uh, I did that before I annealed it just because I wanted it to actually make different indentations and whatnot in the metal. And then here, I want to show you two different ways that I can you can bend them. I did it both ways just to show you as an example. So you can take the kit part and use it as a template to bend over and you'll get okay results, as you can see. The downside is that it's slightly bigger than your kit part, as you can see there, because you're bending it over the kit part. The other thing you can do is take your kit part and match it up to a bending tool, as I have here, made by RP Tools, and then you can bend it over the tool. And you will get a little bit better results just because you're bending something that has the correct radius, or at least a closer radius. It might not be exact. And here we can see the difference. The one on the right is from the tool. The one on the left is from the kit part. And it, the one on the right looked a lot better. So the last step here was just to add some more ripples and dents along the edges. And just trying to make this look like a beat up shroud. I don't think I've ever seen a tiger that had nice looking exhaust shrouds. So Next up is drilling some holes out on this machine gun. This goes on the interior. So this is the ball gunner's gun. Notice there's some zimmerit missing on the edge of this plate. We're going to have to address that later, but I just wanted to show that to you guys. You see uh, something we're going to have to do later. This here is also an issue. The front glacis there did not fit in place. That plate did not fit in. I actually had to cut off the weld beads, and you'll see that here in a moment. But in the meantime, what we're doing is cutting off this fender, uh, not fender, this mud flap piece. We're cutting this off using a rotary tool and we're just going to clean it up with the same rotary tool and I'll come back and sand it as well to give it a nice smooth edge. And we're preparing this for replacement with photo etch. So after I cut those flaps off and then sanded down the weld beads, you can see there's a little bit of a gap there, but it actually fits. And we're going to fill that later. We're going to come back to that, so don't forget. Now moving on to the running gear, we're going to put these nice poly caps inside, in this, in this case of the idler wheel anyway, and we can glue the seam on the outside and keep the poly cap free, which is our goal. Now this is the only one I was able to do it on for now, so you'll see later why this running gear being workable is really nice, but at the same time it's really fiddly later. So what I did here to kind of hold it in place for show for you guys is I put some blue tack at the joints to hold them in place. And that just stops the wheels from falling off constantly. And you can see here, they're moving real nice. We still have fully workable suspension, which is cool. So moving on to the upper hall, we have some gaps to fill on these uh, ejector pin marks. 
Um, so if you take notice, I, I did some photo etch, now I switched back to plastic. I, I, I did a lot of photo etch on the rear, and, and as anyone who's done photo etch knows, it can be very daunting, it can be very time consuming, so I decided to take a break from photo etch for a while and focus on plastic, which is why I did the running gear and the tracks, now we're moving on to the upper hull. And you can see I filled in with some CA and then sanded these pins down, and it looks nice now, because I want to be able to open this uh, compartment up and show off that engine we worked on in the last video. So what I'm doing is I'm drilling some holes in to make some hinges, so I did it on both ends, both on the hull and on the the hatch. And I put some small, I think these are like 0.6 millimeter wire, or yeah, rod in there, and it's cut just slightly bigger than the hinge itself, so they snap into place and it just gives it enough that it holds inside those holes and now we have a fully workable engine compartment hatch which is nice if it's not included in the kit I had to modify that but it's nice to be able to show off that engine that we put all that work into and speaking of workable things I will give RFM credit here these hatches are fully workable out of the box the drivers and radio operators hatches really really nicely done by RFM um, it doesn't necessarily show you how to do that in the directions you kinda gotta figure it out yourself which what to glue and what when to glue it but uh, it is set up nicely for that. So moving on, I noticed a few hinges that were missing, or at least what should look like hinges missing. So again, using my rivet maker, I just added some there to make it look like the end of the hinges are there. Now back to some metal parts. We do have this barrel to put together, and I showed you guys this in the last video. It's a really nice barrel with a 3D printed muzzle, and it was just so easy to put together. It's three parts, goes together like a glove, and then it actually uses the kit part for the part where the barrel attaches to the mantlet and they put these little marks here for you guys so you what you want to do is make sure it just covers up them marks like so and it, it fits perfectly I was really worried about how this would fit with the RFM kit because usually RFM kits have their own particular barrels and springs but this worked out beautifully with an aftermarket barrel I was so happy just look at that one of the things you want to notice is there is a little bolt on the front there a nut you can make sure that that is on top. Now one thing they did have here, and I'm assuming this is just a mistake in design, there's these ejector pins on top and there's negative ones in the bottom of this turret top. I thought they were attachment points, but they're not. And you can see when I cut them off, I made holes. So I went back and filled them with CA. Then just show you another piece that's workable. Again, if you glue it right, is the commander's hatch. So that is fully workable. There's a handle underneath you can push up and move it out, which is going to be important because we're going to be putting a figure on this model. One other thing I needed to correct here was that there was Zimmerit right underneath the escape hatch or ammunition hatch on the back of the turret. I had to scrape that off so that the attachment point would actually sit flush or else it would be floating on Zimmerit, which didn't look right. So fix that up. Uh, moving on to the tracks. Again, I'm focusing on the plastic stuff. Tracks is usually one of the last things I do, especially workable ones. I like workable ones. It's like a love-hate thing. I, I like them because they're workable, but I hate them because they take forever. This took me a good six hours to do all these. So the nice thing is this jig they give you is really well done, and then they give you the pins in sets of four. So you do 12 sets of tracks at a time, 12 links. There are two different pins, one for the outside and one for the inside. And then once you have all the pins in place, I do put a slight dab of liquid cement, just a very, very, like, like as if the, the end of the brush is just moist with cement. I put that in on the pins to hold them in place, and then I glued down, again, very light on the cement, put on the guide horns, and then after you're done, you have 12 links that are fully workable, which is really nice. Each side needs eight sets of those 12 for a total set number of 16 sets of 12 links for the whole tank so it took me i want to say it's about five or six hours but they look really good and they're workable so one more step is to cut off this little nub that they put for an antenna and drill out that hole so we can add a wire antenna later and as i learned from my t34 i'm not putting it on yet because i'm just going to knock it off later so moving on to some more photo etch now so now the plastic parts are done we're going to go back to photo etch this is the one rear mud flap we're going to put on you can see the hinges. I actually will show you how I do a hinge. I believe I have that in here. What I, I do is I use the wire itself that I'm going to put in as the hinge pin. I use that as my 
jig for bending the hinge around. So nothing crazy new, but uh, just a little tip for you guys. The other thing here is cleaning off them photo etch little nubs. I use a knife sharpener actually to do that. It's a great little tip for cleaning up photo etch if you can. So again, here's, we're at the front mud flap now. So this one here, I'll go a little bit more detail in. So we have the front attachment points, hinges that are gonna actually attach to the tank. We have a little handle we're gonna attach. The details of this are actually just wild. I didn't think it was this detailed, but there we have another little hinge latch. This is for that side flap. I think it's for the transport tracks when they lift that up for servicing. So another wing nut, like these little tiny wing nuts. And then here's our hinge hinges i should say just two of them on there and you can see the hinges are in there now i glue them down so the hinges are in there for show i didn't leave them workable just because i know if i there's certain things if you leave them workable i know they're just going to break off later so i just glued everything down in place but it looks like they're workable and then attach it to the front plate that we doctored up earlier so you can see i only put one down and I actually do have a reference photo showing this. You can see here on this Tiger 217, we have one on the, on the, would be the right side as we're looking at it, and none on the left. So again, I actually really like the look of a tank with no mud flaps on. The tracks just look mean. So I wanted to go for that look. I attached a bunch of 3D printed parts that came with the kit, as I mentioned earlier, on the side. Unfortunately, the, uh, uh, what do you want to call it, the wire the pieces on the end of the wire uh, broke off, so I couldn't use those, unfortunately. But I'll, we'll doctor that up later. The piece that was missing on the front, I replaced with a piece of C-channel, so I can put spare tracks on. And the other nice thing I want to point out is that this kit comes with extra tools that do not have clamps on them already. So which you want to use those if you're going to use the upgrade kit. So here, just showing some details of this jack block. I'm assuming this is a jack block. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is the block of wood for the jack. So the details of this are just so much better than the kit parts. Again, I know they sell the upgrade uh, piece separately. It does add a little bit of cost, but it, I think it's well worth it. I think it's well worth the effort. I mean, you can see all these tool clamps on the front. So the one thing they did include in the kit I didn't like was a string for the cable for the tow cables so I was like no I'm not putting string on there you guys all know what happens when you put string on a model it's fuzzy it's yeah not doing it so I took some 24 gauge wire my vise and a drill and I made my own now I made these a little bit longer I think I cut these at like 240 millimeters and you'll see why just because well obviously you have the ends that are going to be a little messed up from being clamped in there but look how nice that looks that's a beautiful 135th scale cable. Now, it might be a little oversized, so maybe you want to go with like 28 gauge wire, um, but I didn't have anything like that in stock. So the other thing I did was I annealed this with my burner. The idea is just to make it so it's, you know, more, uh, how you say, easy to work with. So setting this down, I did struggle with this first one, but you can see how the lengths are a little off, so you want to kind of dry fit well, you're going to dry fit this a lot until you get it worked into place and then glue everything down and it looks really good. It just looks so nice in scale. Now, the second one went so much easier. I really dry fitted this a lot. I set the ends of the cable down first and glued them in place and then I made the wire match. And you can see how it just literally it popped right into place. It was so beautiful. Works so much better. So next thing I want to do is add some battle damage. I've never done battle damage on a tank, just weathering. I want to do some battle damage. But a lot of videos, or not, not necessarily videos, but references I've seen other modelers do, they kind of go a little over the top with it, which looks cool. I just want to do some subtle stuff, just a little bit, because I've never done it before. I don't want to go over the top. So we're going to add a few shell marks on the front here, and we're going to also add a ricocheted round on the side here, because, I mean, come on, this armor is so thick. And the trick with a tiger is just angling. You angle it, and you're going to bounce shots. And that's exactly what we're trying to portray here is a ricocheted round off the side. And that little ball burr on the end of a rotating tool like that, so nice. So moving on to the biggest piece of photo etch on the kit. This is the rear storage box on the back of the turret. I annealed everything first and I tried soldering it, but folks, I'm not a good solderer. I struggled really badly. Maybe it was just because of the angles, I don't know. 
So I resorted to super glue. You can see there's super glue all over the place. I also had a disaster during this where that middle box actually completely broke apart on me. I had to glue it back in place. So I did do that successfully. Here you can see I put the top hatches on there together and then I took some green stuff epoxy putty and I was successful this time at making something a lot more in scale than I did on my T34. That's a nice in scale tarp I think. Not so thick. The trick was I used my little glass bottle of debonder as my roller and cornstarch. Cornstarch to roll it in. Real easy. Makes it not sticky. Easy to work with. Shove it in this one side of this box. Set down that hatch cover in front of it and I was so happy with that result. I just wanted a little bit of something. Nothing over the top, just a little something. And that's why I struggled through that box. It was totally worth it in the end. So, I've shown you guys how I've done grab handles before, but I'm going to show you again. I use a compass, line up the holes, match it up to my 3D printed handle bender, which is available if you guys are interested. I'll leave a link in the description. I know other folks have used it and liked it. So you're welcome to check it out yourself. I used that to bend the handle, glue it in place. Now I went on to paint some of the interior parts so I could start gluing it together. And I pulled out my old liquid mask from Ammo and it was hardened, I couldn't use it. So unfortunately I switched, but I switched over to BMS because I had some and I was like, well, I'll try this. And it worked just as well. It's clear though, which is a little confusing. It's hard to see if it's really on there versus the blue stuff the Ammo has, but Wanted to cover up all the clear bits like the vision ports and periscopes before we paint it. So I'm painting the interior white. I did do the back of the plate blue. I just don't think I included that in here. But um, did paint all the interior parts. And this is so I can go back and do all the detail painting on the interior. So here we have some black Vallejo just to do some detail painting. I also touched up these buttons just to make them pop a little bit just add a little bit more detail and this is so we can glue them down because if we glue them down to the hull and then try to paint them it's going to be a pain in the butt because remember our interior is already painted so i also want to do some light chipping again you guys have seen me do this in the previous video so i'm not going to go into a lot of detail we're just going to show this hatch here i did some red rub brown chipping to show the red paint primer chipping and then the steel chips over top no i did not do them with a brush like i normally do on my exterior and you guys, again, if you're interested in seeing more detail on how I weather the interior of a tank, go check out the first video if you haven't seen it already. I go into much more detail throughout the entire tank, and here you can see the results of that video uh, on the inside. And just trying to make it all match. So you can see everything matches. So I did it the same way I did uh, in the first video. So again, go check that out if you want to see more details on how I detailed the interior with weathering and chipping. So we attached that top glaze system we're gonna put in this top plate now one of the things I noticed is I didn't like the weld beads that were along the top because there was actually a gap at the top glazes and there was also just ugly weld beads on the bottom and I figured if I'm gonna put some in I'm just gonna do the whole thing so you can see I made a gap for myself to put a weld into and I'm also gonna fill that gap at the top of the plate to put uh, to, 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 to fill it with weld beads and fill that gap and so here I'm putting the back plate on as well just showing you that I know I'm bouncing around a lot, but that's because I'm trying to be very particular in how I put this thing together. And I thought the back, I thought that turned out beautiful. That's really nice. So snapping the top in place, right? I'm making sure before I go putting everything together in its final spot that it all still fits, and it does. It all fits like a glove. And I, I'm not gluing the top armor plate down, just like I'm, I'm going to attach the top of the turret, but I'm not gluing it down. It just snaps into place. The fitment of this RFM kit is so well that I can snap things into place without any major gaps or seam lines. I can pull it apart and show off the interior to somebody who wants to see it. So I went back, now that everything's in place, and I had used some just Tamiya basic putty to fill in these battle damage, these uh, shell impacts a little bit, and then use the end of my, my brush to kind of just shape them a little bit. And the idea there is just to show like the, the melted metal on the front from when it hit. So then I did roll in some green stuff epoxy putty to make welds um, and I, I took a piece of brass on the end of a toothpick to make a little C shape to make weld beads. And the tough part about this was there was nothing underneath there to, to hold uh, the, the weld bead in place. So it, it I turned out better than the kit part, 
but uh, not as good as I had hoped it would. So then the missing Zimmerit, I just took some epoxy putty that I had left over, and I put it over that flat part of that front plate and used my utility knife, my uh, hobby blade, to just wiggle it in there and make the Zimmerit. Then attached the side uh, skirts, and then this light is last. I did add a little piece of uh, wire there for that light as well so I can make it removable. And then we have our little guy to top it off. Thank you guys so much. I did add some foliage as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. We have so much more work to do on this tiger, and this has been one heck of a journey so far. Again, thank you guys and enjoy. Folks, thanks again for watching. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. If you want to see more content like this, you're going to have to subscribe if you're going to miss out. Also, if you want to see more updates almost on a daily basis from my workbench, please check out my Patreon link below. I'll leave it in the description for you guys.